you've gone to a class or two, you've practiced a bunch on your own, you've picked up a handgun of your very own, and now you want to start carrying. Demonstrating clear. But oh no, you want to eat with both hands. Look up information online. Masturbate furiously. You're going to have to put the gun down. You can't just hand it to the guy at the hot dog cart and hope he won't run off with it, because uh, I can tell you from per You know what, never mind, let's get into the rest of the episode. Holsters. They are the first thing that you need to be thinking about after your firearm when you start figuring out your personal carry situation. And arguably, you should be figuring out your holster and your gun at the same time. Figuring out what you'll be deploying and how you'll be deploying it very much goes hand in hand. You wouldn't separate learning chopping skills from cooking, they, they kind of just tie in together. What holster you can get and what holster you'll choose to get will be first decided by what gun you have, then decided by what situation you're carrying it in and why you're carrying it. And third, maybe decided about whether or not it looks cool. We're humans, we care. It's important to note that holsters are going to have a wide variety of what they can and can't do, and each of them will have wildly different benefits and drawbacks. Um, so it's important to note well, what they do and how they do it. It's also important to note why they do it, because some tools, frankly, are designed to separate you from money rather than actually do something effective for you. I'm gonna stop you right now and let you know this isn't going to be a literally everything you could ever want to know about holsters video. That in and of itself would probably be several hours to a day long. This is gonna be a decent overview of some concepts and some technologies that you'll likely be encountering when you uh, are picking up your holster. I should also note there's a few examples of things that I have just flat out refused to buy. Some stuff I have because it's cheap and I wanted to have it as an example, or it was cheap and I got it earlier on. Uh, other stuff, I would say, uh, there's some stuff I specifically don't own, and I'll get into why I specifically don't own it. Well, other stuff I would absolutely love to, but I don't have the money for it at the moment, or it is something that is going to be coming much further down the line. Looking at you, Filster. If you're new to guns, this is not going to be one to miss, and even if you're an old hat, you might pick up a few pieces of information that'll be useful along the way. So, let's go! That said, I've seen my engagement number, so before I get to what is basically going to be my major recommendation for a holster up front, hey, you wanna go ahead and hit subscribe? All the cool kids are subscribing. Also, I've been streaming Tarkov. Uh, if you wanna check that out, I'd really appreciate it. I'm over on Twitch, twitch.tv, Queer Armor. Hope to see some of y'all there. Demonstrating clear. This is the Glock store. $30 holster, and it's... This is super fucking basic. Basic! Yeah! <laughs> I laugh! But I mean that as a good thing. That's good. It's really good. It's, good. it's really good. Basic things always are. Because this has a few features that I feel are necessary for a good, solid, effective holster, and none of the cheap crap that gets in the way. This is a concealment holster that is designed to be carried in a waistband, or IWB. You'll see it's spelled out a lot like that. Inner waistband means what it says on the tin. It's designed to be held inside the waistband. It's easy enough to throw on. Pull, tuck, slide that, and bam. With the appropriate clothing, this is now a concealable holster setup. Actually, thinking about it, that's the same procedure for tucking my... Never mind, let's keep going. And this, for me, happens to give the perfect FBI account. It makes drawing rapidly much easier. Now that nobody will see it part is best done with layers of clothing. With something like just this, it won't necessarily be concealable, but with additional layers, you can absolutely rock this. It's small, it's got a solid attachment system that is hard, permanently attached to the rest of the holster itself, and most importantly, it's Kydex. Kydex is thermoplastic, and importantly, Kydex will permanently protect the trigger. Once this gun goes into this holster, there is a hard protection around the trigger. There is no getting in to accidentally pull the trigger. It won't happen. In short, thumbs up a recommendation. If you're looking for a solid cheap holster, highly recommend this one. This is a cheap as fuck $20 Kydex holster. Cheap fuck! I bought this as a cheap holdover. I don't normally need to conceal carry my easy, but when I do, I wanted something easy to throw on. 
and I'm glad I have this rather than, some, than having spent just a little bit more money in order to get something actually decent because now I can show you how terrible this is. This is not good. The retention in terms of holding the gun to itself, decent. The retention in terms of holding the holster to you, not so much. This uses a solid piece of Kydex. That entire attachment point is one solid piece of Kydex that is attached to the holster. This uses an attachment system with these two screws and this clip system. It's important to note that the clip isn't thermoplastic. And importantly, in a lot of places, that clip is nowhere near as firm of a grip as it would otherwise be. Just show you this is empty really quick. Now, most of the time, I can pull this and not have to worry about it. In fact, I've got this to the point that I can be pushing my hip out a bit because I know about the potential problem. That said, because I know about the potential problem, I've also basically been able to develop a way to replicate the issue. If you are sitting down or bending over, there is a good chance the entire holster is going to come out. Because as you're sitting, this is getting pushed out more and more by the force of your hip. If you're going to invest in a holster, the attachment method to you matters as much as the attachment method to the gun. Kydex is the way to go in both directions, at least if you want something cheap. Final judgment on this holster, thumbs down. If you're going to be buying something like this, spend $10 extra and you'll get a much nicer holster. I bought this at the absolute bottom dollar and it shows. Speaking of unsafe triggers, this is the comfort tack. And the idea is supposed to be that you can run a gun in here and not have to worry about it printing. Supposedly, they advertise this as something that you can use while you're on a run. Something that you can use while you are exercising if you are somebody who can't disarm even when you're going for a run. One, this prints. This prints really badly. This prints really badly in basically any of the clothing I'd be thinking about going for a run in. Even the flowery stuff, it's still gonna be randomly grabbing on your belly and making it clear to everyone around you, you're carrying. But worse, demonstrating the gun is clear. Hi there, everybody. Flicking the safety off. What I'm gonna prove is first of all, there is a good chance while you are just starting out you might not realize you've got, you know, something in the wrong place. You're just desperately trying to shove this in. And if you push down on this, you hear that click? If this had been loaded, that would have gone off. I wouldn't trust this. If I put this in here, there's still the chance if the nylon like this nylon is not, it's stretchable. I, and this leather is very thin. I would not trust this to keep this safe. And perhaps worst of all, especially for me, this has a grip safety. Now normally that's supposed to mean you can uh, run this without worrying about uh, the gun going off because it will only go off if you have your hand firmly gripping it, except this is currently being, I'll take this off so you can see it clearly. This gun definitely does not work in this setup because the safety is being pushed down by the strap holding it in. Cheap holsters will sometimes work. They frequently won't. They're called gimmicks for a reason a lot of the time. Nylon is a safety nightmare. This has so many problems with it and I cannot find really reasonable use cases for it. Especially with one of the holsters I'm gonna be talking about coming up. Speaking of trigger protection, not all nylon is made the same. A lot of people will look at nylon and think, oh, it's always going to be cheap crap. Um, if you spend money on a nylon holster, you can get something that's more for specific use cases than just complete crap. This, for example, is the Crossfire Cyclone. It is a steel reinforced nylon holster. Now that means the thing protecting your trigger is not a strip of nylon, it's a strip of hard steel. That is far more reassuring. What's less reassuring is the retention. This has these two big-ass spring clips 
uh, forced up past these uh, the, the attachment points. So uh, I'll even say, despite it being uh, a separate piece rather than one solid piece, the, this is a solid construction, it stays to you. What isn't so great about staying in place is the gun itself in the holster. Loading this in, it fits in rather nicely. It's also something that I can very easily knock and jostle this. This is not firmly held by anything. It's not a, an active retention system. It's kind of just passively held in. This is incredibly loose in here. So watch this. Okay. Yet again, showing this is 100% clear. Just doing a few basic exercises and I am already seeing this has come out of the hard attachment part. I could very easily, barely touching it, pull this out. This is not a terrible holster in terms of comfort. In terms of wearing this long term, I would say it's it's definitely one of the more comfortable concealable holsters that I've seen. That said, if you're going to be actively moving around, if you're going to be worried about rolling, especially, frankly, if you have a gun, you're expecting to get into a fight. If you're expecting to get into a fight, Fights are not clean. You will be rolling around. If you get pushed over before you grab your gun and your gun goes flying, what use was it to bring it to the fight? I will use this at the range less because uh, I think it's uh, a good holster for fighting and more. If I'm going to be experimenting with a new gun, this is a universal fit. It'll fit a lot of uh, weird handguns and more importantly, if I'm just experimenting and testing with something, I don't need something high-end. I just need something that'll hold it to me and let me shoot it without like worrying about it falling on the ground. And will protect the trigger while I'm holding it. I see use cases for it, I'm not gonna give it a thumbs down, but I don't think this should be your everyday carry, so I'm just gonna... Speaking of retention, we get to something that combines classic technologies with space-age wonders. This is the JM4 Tactical Holster. And this is what I currently use as my everyday carry. Well, one of them. I'll get to the other in a minute. But basically, any situation these days where I'm carrying my normal carry, and I don't want people to see that I am wearing a gun, I will be using this. I also tend to use this around the home, because its flexibility means when I wake up, this gets thrown on my, like, I, I can rock this in pajamas. That's how awesome this is. It is incredibly easy to... Like, Quickly lift a shirt up, tuck this in, bam. That is one of the more concealed setups that I have. Throwing even just a light shirt on top of that, bam, it's no longer, you can very easily disappear into clothing with this. First of all, my gun at this point, uh, when I'm worried about a break-in overnight, uh, let me demonstrate clear. My gun, at this point, stays loaded overnight, in case I have to deal with somebody breaking in. With this, I can literally just thwack and have it connect to any metal surface. So, the there's a, a metal stand right by my bed, I attach this to that, and I have it sitting here. It's comfortable enough for me to have on for long periods of time. The draw speeds are something that I can get down to on a regular basis, right around where I would with a normal Kydex holster. It's uh, the flexibility and the number of clothing that it allows you to rock concealably because it puts the gun farther down right on the waistline. Um, it genuinely creates a series of really usable situations, including the most usable situation when you don't have a belt. Most holsters, you'll notice, have a belt attachment system. Their idea is they are clipping onto your battle belt or whatever your normal daily belt is. What if you don't have one? Belt carry or Wild West carry is only appropriate in one situation, when you have literally no other option. Let's say I am at the range with a friend and there's an accident and they need me to grab, they, they drop something, they need me to go grab their gun and also be grabbing a few other things. For that brief moment, I might consider emptying the mag, clearing the chamber, and tossing it into my belt entirely so I have hands free to walk back. I would never consider loading, keeping a gun loaded in that state. When you're carrying a gun, this is supposed to be your main safety. And if you carry a gun in your belt, this is an idiot. Which brings up empty pocket carry. 
your pocket is not a trigger shield, and this has the same possibility of going wrong that the Wild West carry does, but even more so because you'll have the random junk from your pocket in there. The only safe way to carry in a pocket is with what's referred to as a pocket holster. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial topic. Um, there are some folks who say never carry a pocket holster, they're the dumbest things ever. I am specifically not one of them. I think there's a time and a place for a lot of different things, and you might find yourself in a situation where you can't carry in any of your normal options. You might need something to fall back on as a, a, a reliable additional option. Demonstrating clear yet again. This is a Vetter pocket holster. Now, this is a little bit on the money side, it's 50 bucks, but it has a couple features on it that I honestly, it completely changes my opinion on pocket holsters. Frequently with a lot of pocket holsters, you'll discover that there is a weird problem where when you try and draw it, it does not draw that fast. Uh, you can feel it catching up on your clothing. You can feel it uh, possibly just not removing and you pull the whole gun out, including the holster. This gives you multiple options for solving those problems. And frankly, it's become my default pocket carrying solution. So first of all, let's say I have it in this pocket. I absolutely never would. If I can wear these pants, I can wear a normal holster. Now, like many pants pockets, this will load in, but also it doesn't grab nicely. So I can just be tossing it off with the thumb brake. That thumb brake is worth its weight in gold because pocket holsters have a tendency to come out with the gun. You need to be able to eject it with just the drawing hand very quickly as you're going. It's a hardy little plastic thing, let it dance across the ground and then go and recover it. That said, the second feature frequently stops that from even being necessary. I have on uh, my ex's winter coat and I have a, the pocket holster loaded in. Now, you can't easily see that I am armed. And when I go to draw, you'll notice it gets caught because there is, in addition to the thumb brake, there is this hook that comes out at an odd angle and is designed to catch your pocket. So in the event that you end up needing to draw, in theory, if it catches, it will get hung up in the pocket. Now, if it doesn't catch, you still have that thumb break. You still have options. But this can allow for a very rapid uh, drawing situation for somebody who's trying to remain concealed. Say you're going out for a nice date. Say you're just hanging out with friends and you want to make sure that you can draw quickly, but also that you are not printing at all. I, most people would not look at me and think I am armed. In fact, most, I can do this and say, look, I have nothing on me. And then have the ability to very rapidly draw a firearm. Now let's switch directions faster than if we were hit in the head by a juvenile delinquent. That's it, back to Winnipeg. <laughs> and let's talk about some options for open carry. I'm not gonna sit here and say open carry is inherently good or inherently bad. I will say it is far more dangerous and takes a lot more effort and work, but also I'm not going to pretend like that's that doesn't have any positive gains. There are absolutely moments where open, def where open carrying makes sense, and there are absolutely moments where open carrying doesn't make sense, where maybe we, we should have conversations around what are the smart ways of doing things. Outer waistband setups. Outer waistband, is the exact opposite of inner waistband. Uh, they both attach to the waist, but outer waistband is designed to be externally shown. And in this case, I am using a Safari Land Omnivore. Now you see that, let me kind of try to clear for you. You see that piece on the bottom? That allows you to attach this, use this holster with any gun that has a strip of Picatinny underneath the front. This holster is the Omnivore by Safari Land. It has a number of really useful features. So for one, when you are open carrying, you need to be thinking about the gun as if it were in your hands at all times. Just standing here like this, I need to be thinking about this gun the same way that I would if I were walking around with a rifle in my hands. And it's really easy to forget or at bare minimum to get relaxed about how you're thinking about this. 
Uh, that's why I like this omnivore system so much, because one of the great things about it is if I just pull on this, I'm gonna yank myself over into whatever direction I'm getting pulled, but I'm not gonna lose this gun. But when I wanna draw it quickly, I can. The reason for that is the omnivore has this big ass button here. So if you just try and grab it normally, it is locked in, but it will only release once that button is pressed. This ends up being a fantastic holster for the times where open carry makes sense. For certain community defense roles, for competition type stuff, for anything where I see value in open carrying a pistol, the omnivore is probably gonna be my go-to. It's got this giant thermoplastic shell protecting anything from getting into the trigger, and this giant button release, all of which pains me to point out why this same company makes one of the worst holsters. Blackhawk makes this holster known as the Serpa holster. The Serpa holster is the same kind of idea. It's an open carry holster, a button retention system. However, on the Serpa, they put the button right here. So it's not you go and you use your thumb to do your normal draw stroke. You put your finger where the trigger is and press really hard in order to be able to release the gun. And you can already see just by demoing that, the problem where my instinct is now to get the finger rapidly into the trigger because I've just been pushing really, really hard on that area. And if you want to see how bad that can go, just ask Tex Grabner. I just fucking shot myself! This is the other holster that, uh, if you've seen me on Twitch, uh, I am regularly carrying this for a couple different reasons. Um, it's the only leather holster I have because leather holsters are money. But good, hol good leather holsters will last a while. Crappy leather holsters are both expensive and a waste of money. But a good solid leather holster, they can be just as safe. A good solid leather holster can be just as safe as a, uh, a Kydex or a thermoplastic holster. And this has given me a number of useful features. So I normally carry this strong side, but if I, my entire day is going to be picking my partner up from work, which is about an hour drive each way, and then sitting at home, I'm not as worried about the tiny stretch of walking into my out of my apartment to my car and from my car to my apartment. If someone's going to be attacking me at home, I'll be drawing and engaging before even seeing them. And if somebody's going to be engaging me in the car, my concern is on a, automotive response. This gives the option to attach here as a standard holster or attach here as a cross-drawn holster. So cross draw, what the hell is that? Why do you care? That holster we were just talking about, this normally is carried as we were demonstrated, but it also has a secondary function where it can be loaded cross draw. The shoulder holster does the same thing. And you've probably seen something like this in Indiana Jones movies and in just general adventure and detective movies where the grizzled, sexy ball of energy that you are supposed to either want to be or want to fuck or both has one of these in a really nice leather and they seem like they know what they're doing, so clearly you should copy what they're doing, right? Well, okay, this might be a relatively normal drawing position. If somebody is 15, 20 feet away. Is it as fast as other positions? It depends on where you practice. You can get it as fast as you want it to be. The problem comes from if you're actually dealing with a tussle, frankly, a lot of times when you have to draw your gun defensively, it's because somebody is fighting you. Fights are not clean. Fights are f messy and weird and all over the place. So my main man, Marquis, if you wanna come on, step on, say hi to the random folks at home, Marquis. Hello there. Marquis is going to demonstrate the giant problem here. And unfortunately, off screen, Marquis has been supposedly bitten by a zombie, let's say. Whether or not this is, yes, let's just go there. Marquis, unfortunately, you are playing the zombie today. And I am going to try and draw while 
trying to also ascertain if you are a zombie. And Marquis, Marquis, are you a zombie? Just my... <laughs> Oh, no. Now, the problem is, if I was trying to draw, and I had my normal draw position, which is the strong side leg position, I would be back, I would have my gun back here, and I would be able to actually get it out. Being up here, my arm has to cross my body in order to draw. And this ends up creating a giant problem, because now I need to figure out how to get Marquis away and off before I have the ability to draw my weapon, and that might have been my main tool for fighting in the first place. Which effectively means I've thrown out my first tool and I'm now going through the list of bad options, trying to figure out what do I do to get to the one I was actually carrying in the first place. Worse, let's say you're the more intelligent version of Zombie, the um, one of the Night of the Living Dead you both want to eat brains and are still having high level thought and can do the the several decades of karate that you clearly had trained beforehand. Yes. Ah. So if let's say we're discussing, I put my hands up because I didn't want to draw yet, but Marquis decides, no, I want that gun. So I put my hands up. That's very accessible for him. And it's unfortunately, I'm now not just fighting over whether or not I can get access to my defensive tool. It's a question of whether or not I'm going to die to it. And because of that, Crossdraw has a lot of serious problems with it. I would not recommend this for exactly this reason as your main carry. So you may be wondering why the hell does Crossdraw exist at all? And if it does exist, is it entirely a, a, a lie being sold to you by movies because, you know, sexiness? No. The reason it kept popping up in all of those old detective movies is because detectives don't actually do the sexy stuff that we think of them. They spend 98% of their careers in a car. You're driving around a lot, and especially if you're doing any sort of, let's say, this is a reasonable thing you may have to do. You have a, a expensive item that you're collecting. You have a, a, a vehicle, or you're going to the bank, and you're going to be collecting a large amount of money and you're recognizing that your main concern at that point is going to be interacting with somebody trying to take your car. Or say you're going on a 48 hour trip. For those 48 hours, outside of very brief moments, you're going to be entirely in the vehicle. So Marquis, we're going to do the same zombie exercise, only now there is a vehicle and a window here. And you'll notice uh, as Marquis comes up, trying to do the whole zombie thing, my drawing ability does not matter because the ability for that to be affected by something through the window is basically nil. I have a pane of protection here. So the idea that uh, the cross draw problem exists kind of goes away. Now let's try the exact same thing, only this time I've got the normal cross draw and a seat belt. Okay. He's coming in and I'm like, oh god, oh fuck. The seat belt is going to be right where your gun is. This has led to a large number of idiots trying to draw and then discovering that from that point on they're never going to wear a seatbelt because their main concern is, well, I need to be able to access my firearm. The chance that you're going to be in a shooting versus the chance that you're going to be in a car accident are so wildly out of whack that you really do need to be focusing on some you know, basic car safety before you think about the stuff around carrying a gun around. And if your solution to keeping yourself safe from a violent attack is to make yourself unsafe while driving the vast majority of the time, you aren't actually caring about safety, you're carrying a gun as a fetish object. Technically gives a third option that I really haven't been using because the, the draw time for back carry is a little bit worse, but more so than that, um, it might kind of look cool because you have the whole gangster setup, you're also putting this big weight on the small of your back. Now, if you fall in the wrong place, you're now having metal punch into your back. Now, that's real not good. Cross draw, there's some arguments to be had there, both with this holster and with the, uh, the shoulder holster I'll be showing you in a moment. 
good leather holsters are worth it. Crappy leather holsters are both dangerous and more money than a cheaper Kydex would have been. This is a shoulder holster. Now there are two forms of the shoulder holster. One, which is a massive safety fail, and this one, which is just more of a, a tactical failing than anything else. Now that said, this holster specifically is relatively cheap. The nylon is something I'd be worried about. You have to make your own safety with this because it has a lot of the problems that traditional nylon would. If this bunches up, this could get into a trigger and then while you're pushing it in, go sharp and clear. This is the kind of thing where if you are rushing and something gets pushed in, you could in theory get a click. And again, you never want to have a click when you're trying to put something into a holster. That is a dangerous fail. That's not gonna be a click if that was loaded. And that's gonna be a fucking boom. Nylon is a cancel. The reason why I prefer this over the other forms of shoulder holster though, are because at least this is only a safety fail to me. It is only a safety fail if I'm not cautious putting the gun away and I can adjust for that for the very few times I'm gonna be using this. This is standing in opposition to the other form of, of the shoulder holster. This is what's known as a vertical shoulder holster. So when you pull the gun out, the gun's orientated vertically. Now, this makes the draw stroke very dumb because you have to be doing this thing where you rotate the gun to where you need to be shooting and then uh, like doing this awkward hand ballet rotating it because you want to be avoiding the common problem of the sideways shoulder holster. The common shoulder harness is hold the gun like this. You put the gun in here and you'll see someone walking around vaguely like that. That also means that gun is constantly sweeping everybody. Now whether or not it's sweeping everybody while it's in its holster is a whole conversation that people of varying tactical stripes will argue about for days. What can't be argued is as soon as the gun is drawn, as soon as it's in your hand, if you are pointing it at somebody, you're sweeping them. There is no way to draw this gun without inherently pointing it behind you randomly in random directions. The, the dangers of side shoulder harnesses are basically you sweep everything and you're constantly pointing it at everything. The vertical shoulder harness, at bare minimum, there is a safe draw stroke. It's a little bit weird to get used to, and I'd probably make the argument that there's better holsters. Holster choices are going to be dictated wildly by your guns, by your personal situation, by your personal training, and what you need a gun for. Don't fall into the trap of buying what your local friends or your local cops or your local military unit, the only thing that they use isn't necessarily the thing you'll need on a day-to-day -day basis. They use it in X force or in Y group or for Z style should be the starting point for how you develop what you need and what you do. It shouldn't be the end. Thank you all for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm over on Patreon if you want to support me directly. Also, like I said earlier, I've got a Tarkov stream. I'm streaming Monday through Friday, 6 to 10. Hope to see a bunch of y'all there. That's it for me. Stay dangerous. Keep each other safe. And remember, moral doesn't mean legal. And Stonewall was a riot. Peace.